Hey GAs, I'm glad that you could join me here again this week. Let's go ahead and start our meeting with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to continue on with our weekly GA lesson. And Lord, I ask that you continue to watch over our GAs and their families, that you keep them healthy and well. And also, Lord, I lift up our missionaries, um, that you would watch over them and and just help them to overcome any challenges that they might face to spreading the gospel in Puerto Rico. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, girls, we'll start out with our GA pledge. Feel free to recite it with me. As a GA, I will do my best to live a missions lifestyle that honors God by learning about missions, praying for missions, giving to missions, doing missions, and participating in the work of the church. And our scripture verse, as you know, comes from Isaiah chapter 12, verse 4. Give thanks to the Lord. Worship him. Tell the nations what he has done. Announce how honored he is. And our GA lifestyle verse comes from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must treat people fairly. You must love others faithfully. And you must be very careful to live the way your God wants you to. So girls, uh, this month we have been studying a Bible lesson from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. And as you'll recall, in this lesson, Jesus came to stay with two sisters, Mary and Martha. And I'm going to read the lesson for us one more time just to help refresh our memories on uh, what happened when Jesus came to stay with these ladies. While Jesus and his followers were traveling, Jesus went into a town. A woman named Martha let Jesus stay at her house. Martha had a sister named Mary. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and listening to him teach. Martha became angry because she had so much work to do. She went in and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to do all the work? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are getting worried and upset about too many things. Only one thing is important. Mary has chosen the right thing, and it will never be taken away from her. So, in our lesson, uh, we see that, you know, it wasn't that Martha was doing a bad thing. She was excited to have such an important person as Jesus come to stay with them. And so, of course, she wanted to tidy up the house, um, you know, prepare the food, um, do all those things that we do when we have a special guest come to visit. But those things weren't nearly as important as what her sister Mary was doing. Um, Martha was doing good things, but Mary was doing the best thing, which was to put everything else to the side and make listening to Jesus and spending time with Jesus the number one priority for that day. And that's what we need to, to do always. Now, our missionaries, we learned last week, they had a good plan just like Martha had a good plan in our Bible lesson, but God had a better one, right? Um, if you'll remember, last week we learned how Jorge and Rebecca Santiago helped the people in Comarillo, Puerto Rico um, after Hurricane Maria. Remember, there was um, a lot of damage done to the country there. We talked about last week how that hurricane was bigger than the whole country of Puerto Rico and how people lost electricity and we learned that Jorge and Rebecca shared God's love with the people by meeting their physical needs. One thing they did was to set up a free community laundry facility. If you'll remember, the people were having to wash their clothes in dirty, stinky water. Um, and so Rebecca and Jorge saw a great need there that they were able to go in and fill for that community. And at the same time, while those people came to the laundry facility, then Jorge and Rebecca were able to um, tell them about Jesus while they were there. So let's read a story to find out what Jorge and Rebecca did next. If you'll turn in your GA World magazine to page 16, there's a page called God is Real. And I'm going to read that for you today, and you can follow along. 
When Jorge and Rebecca Santiago moved to Coma Rio to start a church, their plans were interrupted by a hurricane. But Jorge and Rebecca didn't let a hurricane keep them from pursuing God's plan for them. They found many ways to share God's love with the people of Coma Rio. One day, while Jorge was reading his Bible, he felt God say to him, It's good to serve the people, but the reason you are here is for the gospel. Jorge knew he had to go for it, just like our motto is go for it. He and Rebecca started a church called One Church with people they had met through the free laundry ministry. The church worked with Send Relief to bring volunteer mission groups to Colmarillo to help rebuild homes. The people from Send Relief also shared about God's love with the people they were helping. God pursued the people of Colmarillo through Jorge, Rebecca, and volunteers from Send Relief. Ed Mari is a school teacher. Because Colmarillo is mountainous, there are few places to build houses. Many houses are stacked on top of one another. Ed Mari's house was stacked on top of her parents' house. She thought she might be in danger when the storm hit, so she took her daughters to her parents' house below. Ed Mari said, Once the storm had passed, I went back to my house and everything had been destroyed. There was nothing left. The roof of Edmari's house was completely gone. She had to have a tarp spread over the top of her house until it could be repaired. Volunteers from Send Relief rebuilt Edmari's house. Her house is now better than it was before the hurricane. Edmari said that because of Hurricane Maria, she learned that God is real. And then another story about someone named Christian. Christian is Jorge's cousin, and Christian's home was badly damaged by the hurricane, too. While he was cleaning up the debris, Christian stepped on a nail, and his foot became infected. The doctors were thinking about amputating Christian's foot. Jorge visited his cousin and talked to him about God. Christian said, I decided to ask God to heal me, and I saw a change in myself. Those prayers were heard. Christian's foot started to heal. Christian said, That's when I realized there is a God who takes care of us and protects us at all times. Christian learned that God is real, and he decided to become a Christian. Before Hurricane Maria, Christian had gotten into trouble with the police. After the hurricane and his experiences, he was changed. His mother, Maribel, saw the changes in his life, and she decided to become a Christian, too. Then Rebecca talked to Christian's sister, who also decided to follow Jesus. Jorge baptized all of them, and they now attend one church. Send Relief also helped Christian rebuild his house. These are just a few of the people that Jorge, Rebecca, and Send Relief have shared God's love with in Coma Rio. It hasn't stopped there. Many of these new believers are bringing their families and friends to one church to learn about God's love. In fact, so many people have come to one church, they have had to move to a larger building. God is real, and His love continues to spread. So isn't that a wonderful story of how, uh, you know, we said last week that God is bigger than a hurricane. You know, um, Jorge and Rebecca had plans for when they got to Colmarillo, and then this hurricane struck, and it just completely uh, caused devastation in Puerto Rico and also completely changed their plans. But God is bigger than that hurricane, and he worked all those things for good and, and was um, able to give Jorge and Rebecca opportunities that they wouldn't have had before and, and allow them to go out and change the lives of these people by spreading the gospel. So I just think this is a wonderful story. I hope that you all, um, even as we wrap this month up soon, I hope that you'll continue to remember this family and what they're doing in Puerto Rico. It's just a wonderful um, outreach that they're a part of. So there's a couple of activities this week that you can complete in your GA World magazine. The first one is on page 17, and it says, it's called Message Machine. And it says, the clothes in this washing machine have a hidden message. Unscramble the wor words and write them on the color-coded lines on the bottle of laundry detergent, 
to find out how Jorge helped the people of Comarillo. So if you look, there's um, different words on different colors of laundry. So if you just match them up, I did the first one for you. Uh, the purple lines there at the beginning. If you unscramble the letters that go with those lines, you'll spell out the name Jorge. So you can continue to do that. And then once you have completed this activity, um, text me the answer and let me know what you come up with, okay? And then the second page in your GA World magazine that I want you to work on this week is on the next page, page 18. It's called Name That Hurricane. And it says tropical storms that start in the Atlantic Ocean are named by the World Meteorological Organization when they reach and maintain a speed of 39 miles per hour. Once the speed reaches a steady 74 miles per hour, the storm is classified as a hurricane. The WMO has six lists of names that are reused every six years. The list uses male and female names in alphabetical order. When a storm is extremely destructive, the name is retired and never used again. And that was the case for Hurricane Maria. At the bottom of that page, it tells us that the name Maria was retired after Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in 2017. That storm was so destructive that its name can never be used again. But on your worksheet here, uh, these are the hurricane names for the year 2020, and they're all hidden in this puzzle. So I want you to find the names, and then I want you to pray for people who have been or will be affected by those storms. And I've done the first one for you. The first one is Arthur. So go through and see if you can complete that word search, and then you can take a picture and uh, send me the completed search once you're finished. And the last thing that we're going to do this week, this is a neat little thing um, that I had not heard of before. I told you on our first lesson that I learned a lot of things about Puerto Rico this month. So I'm going to tell you another interesting fact about them, and you see if you knew this. Jorge told many people about Jesus and the, at the washing machines. Then he decided to look for other ways to tell people about Jesus. Jorge decided to hold a VBS, Vacation Bible School, in Comarillo. Churches sent mission teams to help him. It was the largest VBS anyone had ever seen in Comarillo. How exciting. Jorge said, when I think about God, I think about big. So we wanted to do this big because that's how God is. Comarillo doesn't have many churches. So here, the bigger the VBS, the better. There was singing and dancing and crayons and candy and games and geckos. That's right, geckos. Here's that fact that maybe you knew or maybe not. I definitely did not know this about Puerto Rico. But you heard that right, geckos. When it was all done, lots of children and parents who'd never been to church before had heard about Jesus and decided to follow him. So... Many of you have probably been to VBS here at our church. Can you imagine having geckos at VBS? Well, Puerto Rico has a lot of geckos, and Puerto Rican artists use geckos in their artwork. They decorate the art geckos with beautiful designs and bright colors. So this week, when I send uh, your family the link to our GA lesson, I'm also going to send them a link to print off this paper and it says, um, to glam your gecko. And I know I have so many GAs that are artists, so this should be really fun. But it says, glam this pet gecko and give her a name. And then hang her up at home to help you remember to pray for Puerto Rico. So you'll have a link to one that you can print off that's blank. And then I printed mine off and I went ahead and glammed mine up. So um, once you have glammed your gecko, be sure and take a picture and send it to me so I can see it. And then before we close in prayer, uh, just the last thing I want to remind you about is your memory verse, or verses. Remember, it's verses this month, and you can find them on page 12 in your GA World magazine. They come from Luke chapter 10, verses 41 through 42. And it's Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Really, only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So keep practicing those memory verses and see if you can't memorize those this month. <clears throat> and as we close,
close in prayer. We are going to pray for an MK. We're going to pray for Presley Beasel this month. She's on page 9 in your GA World magazine. <coughs> Presley Beasel is 7 years old. She lives in Ohio. She's homeschooled and in the first grade. She likes ice skating, swimming, drawing, reading, playing, watermelon, raspberries, strawberries, and grilled cheese. And she says, I go to school at my house with my sisters, and my mom teaches us. I am learning to read and spell, and I can't wait to read a chapter book all by myself. Every Thursday, we go to a co-op where we see our other homeschool friends. We go on field trips to see all kinds of things. I loved seeing a ballet. My parents are church planters. My dad teaches people about Jesus, and my mom sings songs about Jesus all the time. My favorite thing about being an MK is that my family gets to tell people about Jesus. Please pray for people to truly know who Jesus is and for their lives to be transformed by the gospel. <clears throat> Pray for the Lord to continue to bless and protect our family as we share the good news of Jesus Christ. So as we close in prayer, let's remember the Beasel family in Ohio that um, God will continue to um, help them spread the good news of Jesus there and that people's lives will be transformed. And let's also be sure and remember um, our missionaries in Puerto Rico. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to stay connected. Lord, we pray for the Beasel family in Ohio, <clears throat> that you would help them to spread the good news there and let lives be transformed, Lord, and let them accept your gift of salvation. And Lord, we also pray for our missionaries in Puerto Rico, that you will continue to bless them. We thank you for being bigger than a hurricane, Lord, that, that we know that uh, you can take things that seem bad and turn them into something good. And we just thank you and give you praise and glory for that. And we pray that you'll continue to be with those missionaries there, Lord, and that uh, you'll continue to open doors for them and help them to spread the good news in Puerto Rico. And all this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. See you uh -huh. next week, girls. <laughs>